So if you guys watched my previous video, I went through the firmware update on the Mini 2 as well as the DJI Fly app update version 1.2.2. And like I mentioned in my previous video, there's a firmware update on this right here, which is the Mavic Air 2. Now the main reason why I want to do a separate video is because of the fact that there's functions on the Air 2 that the Mini 2 does not have. So I wanted to kind of separate out those videos because I know a lot of people were kind of wondering how come I'm not seeing certain features that I have on the Mini, I'm not seeing on an Air 2. They're completely two different aircrafts, so there's functions on here that you're not gonna get on the Mini 2. So in this video, let's go through the firmware update on the Mavic Air 2, which is version 1.00.0511. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. So if you're looking at taking your content to the next level, Epidemic Sound has been my go-to source for all my music in my videos. Whether I'm editing drone footage, behind the scenes, or some of my vlogs, Epidemic Sound provides high quality, royalty-free music, so you never have to worry about copyright claims or losing monetization on your videos. They have a couple plans to choose from, whether it's a personal plan for most content creators, or if you wanna get the commercial plan, mostly geared towards freelancers as well as businesses. Both plans give you full access to over 32,000 songs in their library as well as all of their sound effects. So if you want to enhance your videos with some sound design, make sure you guys check the link down below in the video description for a no commitment, 30 day free trial of Epidemic Sound. And now back to the video. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you are all up to date as far as your firmware goes. So you want to download the most recent DJI Fly app, which is version 1.2.2. I'll make sure those links are down below in the video description if you guys need to download that for your iOS or Android device. Once you launch the app, there should be on the top left hand side there, if you need a firmware update, there should be a little notification that says update the firmware, hit update, so that now you have the most recent app as well as the firmware updated on your Mavic Air 2. Now in this new firmware version 1.00.0511, there's two new features on here and I'll just read them off right now from the release notes. There's added cruise control for free mode in hyperlapse as well as optimized return to home or RTH. Now before we actually head out into the field to test both of these features out, what I wanna do first is go to my GoFly and in the top right hand corner, click on those three dots and then go to control tab. And in control tab, there is a couple new features in here. First one is when you get to button customization, this is the button right here, which is that function button on that top left of your remote control. That's actually a shortcut button. Now what you wanna do is click on that where it says tap. So if you just tap that once, it'll now go into that mode. There's a couple new things in here that we didn't have on the Mini 2. So the first thing we have now is an option for auxiliary LED. So if you click on auxiliary LED, you can now turn on and off that light on the very bottom of your Air 2, just like that. So if you have auxiliary LED on, that tap function, you can now turn it on and off. And then most importantly here at the very bottom, it says hyperlapse cruise control. Make sure that is switched on. And now when we are up in the air doing a hyperlapse in free mode, you can now hit that button, which will now put it into cruise control. Now the next feature that we have is the optimized return to home. So this is when you're at a distance between five meters and 50 meters, that instead of you returning to home or pressing that return to home button and having your drone go up to a certain height, you'll normally set that return to home height in the app. But if you're in between that five and 50 meters range, instead of it going to that designated height, it would then just actually change orientation and come straight back home. With that said, let's get out into the field, test out that hyperlapse cruise control as well as a return to home. All right, so we're all set up. Let's get this thing up in the air, I'll show you guys the cruise control button that you're able to press in free mode and hyperlapse. So let's get this thing out there, turn it around because I think it'd be a little bit better shooting this way with the sun. So I'm gonna fly it out there first and do the hyperlapse coming backwards. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with hyperlapse in general, make sure you guys check out the link above as well as down below. I've gone through a bunch of tutorials on how I do hyperlapses or how hyperlapses work. So make sure you guys check out those videos if you are unclear about some of the other hyperlapses that are out there. Make sure you guys check out my other video. But in this video, we are just gonna be doing a free hyperlapse, which basically means free is you're able to control it. Now, the difference here is that you are now able to hit cruise control, kind of like your car, where now it'll maintain the same speed throughout that hyperlapse. And another thing to note, if you are gonna be doing hyperlapses, you want a full battery. Hyperlapses normally take up some time to do. And if you're trying to do a hyperlapse with you know a quarter or half battery, you might not be able to finish that hyperlapse. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is go into hyperlapse in the bottom right hand corner, go into hyperlapse free mode. Now the big thing here is that you'll see at the very bottom, it'll say what my duration is, 
how long it's going to take, how long my intervals of shooting is going to go. But you also want to look at the very bottom there as um, what your resolution is. So if you want to change your resolution, it'll be by default 1080p. And what you want to do is go to your resolution here. Now you can change it to how you want to shoot. Do you want to shoot MP4, MLV, resolution of 1080, 4K, or even 8K? Do I want to shoot JPEG or RAW? So you want to be able to adjust these here, because if not, I think by default, it'll just shoot at 1080p. All right, so right now we're set at, with a duration of, it'll take about four minutes to do. Two second intervals is the photos, and the frames, we're gonna take 125 frames, so it'll give us a five second video at the very end of it. And let's, uh, let's go. So right now we can do at max 3.4 miles an hour. So depending on which and how far and how fast I'm going, once I hit that cruise control, it'll maintain that speed. So let's start it now, hit start, and then move that joystick, that right joystick forward. And while that's moving forward, now hit that function button right there. And there you go, now we are in cruise control, kind of like your cruise control in your car. You wanna set the speed at what rate you're gonna be moving forward at. Then once you're happy with that speed, hit cruise, which is that function button on the top left of your remote control. And there you go, it just completed. Now it says creating video. So let's see, after this is done creating, you can see here the progress on the right hand side of the screen where the record button is, about 20% done. So once this is all done, we'll see what it looks like. And there you go, it's all complete now. Let's uh, preview it. Just to know that when you are in free mode, you can actually turn that joystick and move the aircraft in the air in free mode. All right, so for this next test, we wanna test out that new return to home. Now it says that if I'm about five meters to 50 meters away, it's not going to go all the way up to my designated return to home altitude or height, which is right now set at, I have it set at 150, 150 feet. I could probably lower that down, but we'll just leave it at 150. So right now my auto return to home is set at 150 which means if I'm anywhere between five meters and 50 meters away, ideally, or from what it says, it'll just maintain that height. So if it's only at 50 feet up in the air, it'll just turn around and come back home. So let's test that first. And then I wanna test out what happens if there's an obstacle in the way. And 80 feet, 90 feet. Okay, we're at 30 feet high, right? So that fits within that range. And we're at 95 feet away. So if this works the way it's supposed to, when I hit return to home, it shouldn't go up to that 150 feet range. It shouldn't go up to that auto, auto return to home 150. It should just maintain that height, turn around and come back. So let's see if that does it. So we're at 30 feet up, hitting return to home. Go home. It's turning around right now. Okay, so it did not go up to the 150 feet that I set earlier. So it's working properly. All right, so one question I had is, what if I'm about 100 feet away and I hit return to home and there's something in the way coming back? Do the sensors uh, avoid that obstacle? I know it won't go up to my preset return to home height, which is 150, but let's update the home point right here. And hit record. And then now what I want to do is fly right behind this light post right here, which is probably only about 50 to 60 feet away, which is within those new parameters. And then I'm going to hit return to home and see what happens. Okay, so we don't want to pass that 150 mark or 50 meters. So let's, uh, let's put it right there, which is we're at 95 feet away. So technically, if... Uh, I'm reading this right or understanding it right, we should be able to hit return to home and it should just come straight back now. It should not go up to that 150. So let's try this and see what happens as far as the sensors go. I am lined up with the light post. Let's try hitting it. Return to home. Go home. Okay, it's returning back to home. And there you go, there you go. So I got a warning that says obstacle ahead, ensure surrounding environment is safe and return to home manually. So that's interesting. 
So even though it does not go up to the return to home setting at 150, if there is something in the way on the way back, it will then stop you and give you this warning, obstacle ahead, ensure surrounding environment is safe to return home manually. So I'll hit okay. And then I have to go, of course, look at it and yeah, so what I want to do is let me try hitting it again, see what happens and see if it now brings me up to my return to home 150. Let's try hitting return to home again to see what it does. Go home. There you go. So now it's, yep. Oh, it's still going. It's going up. Yep. Okay, so I hit it again. And now it takes me up to my set height, which is 150. And there you go, easily clears it. But interesting to see how it changed when it was within those parameters. So now it's right above me. I'll just hit tap to cancel and bring this back in manually. And there it is guys, that was a new firmware update on the DJI Mavic Air 2. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Epidemic Sound. If you guys wanna take advantage of that 30 day, no commitment free trial of Epidemic Sound, make sure you guys check out those links down below in the video description. That's all I got for today guys. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Turn that notification bell on, that way you don't miss any of my videos. This is Aldrin Anastasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.